Hello and welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we're working on the ISF and we're going to be changing the front discs and pads. Now these are pretty big discs these and they're six piston calipers as well. These are all Brembo uh, sourced. And the wheel's pretty big. It's a 19 inch wheel with a huge tyre on it. So space is at a premium. So I've parked the car with the wheel turned as far to the left as I can get it. What this will mean is once I get the wheel off I'll actually be able to get to the caliper. It's going to be really difficult to get a breaker bar or whatever in there if it's turned straight. So we'll take the wheel off, I've already took some of the nuts off, jack the car up and take the wheel off and then have a look at uh, the situation. Okay the wheel is now off, um, you can see what a beast this caliper is, big six potter, um, and why we need some space to get around the back of this. Um, the disc not in fantastically bad nick, there's quite a large lip top and bottom uh, and I actually got a set of discs when I bought the car for the front discs and pads so it seems silly not to change them, it's making a grinding noise and the pads have wear indicators on them as you can see here there's like a little metal spring thing when the pads get uh, low enough that spring bounces on the on the disc and makes a horrible screeching noise um, so that's when you know that your pads are probably worth changing so we're going to do that we're going to take both discs off take the caliper off change the brake pads change the discs so the first job is we need to undo there's a 13 mil sorry wrong place 13 mil nut there which we have to undo and then we have to drive these pins out with a punch so I'll probably get some tape, put it on here just to protect the paint on the caliper in case I miss. So drive both of these pins out, watch this clip doesn't spring off and hit us in the face, and undo this bolt and push this bolt out as well. Okay, um, pins out, top and bottom, big pin, um, this one. Uh, undo the, the nut and take it out and then push this through. This, this was sitting in the middle here. And the big spring clippy thing is out as well. What I have noticed is all of this is absolutely lathered in brake dust. None of it's got any anti-seize or anything like that on. So we'll have to we're gonna clean all these parts of all these pins. I'll get some fine uh, emery on them and clean them up and then we'll lube them up before we put them back in. Uh, you can probably see here that the the brake pads are well ready for doing, they're quite down on material especially compared with the new ones and you can see the six pistons so the next job is to undo the two 17mm bolts for the caliper which are around the back here and then lift the caliper off and what you need to have handy is a bungee because what you don't want is the weight of this massive caliper dragging on the brake line so we'll suspend the caliper off somewhere on the suspension to keep it safe and out of the way and then we'll, uh, we'll take the disc off Okay, so we're now at the point where the caliper is hung on a bungee around the suspension just to stop it pulling on the brake cable and uh, damaging it. Um, I actually compressed using one of these, one of these clamps. I actually used that to release the, the brake pads, they were quite tight on there. Push the pistons in a bit, that'll help us get the new ones in. And the brake pads appear to have shims on, which I'm assuming is for anti squeal. So we'll keep those in case we don't get them with the, with the new ones. The disc is solidly on there and that's what these two little holes are for. Um, I'm going to go rifle my bolt selection uh, drawer and see if I can find two of those. I don't yet know what they are, I think they'll be M8 or M10. Uh, and then you screw two bolts in there and it releases the disc. Because obviously it's probably rust welded itself on there quite, uh, quite well over time. So I'll find some bolts and then I'll uh, resume. Okay, so I found these two coach bolts which have got a, a square end hidden under this mushroomy end that I can turn with a spanner. These look like M10s and then I can turn these a couple of turns at a time and that going against the hub will push the disc off. Well, we hope so. So let's see. And hurrah, literally 
two half turns each on these and you can see these are loose now because the disc has come away from the hub you got a bit of a crack when it released and the disc is now free uh, time to get the new one and swap them over right next job um, obviously this face is quite prone to rust welding onto the disc so I've wire brushed it with a little wire brush and I put some anti-seize on that and I've put a little bit of because it's copper slip I've put a little bit on every stud as well to help with the wheel nuts next thing is to put the new disc on so this is the new disc uh, it's always a good idea just to give it a spray of brake cleaner clean off any oil that's been used by the factory to stop it going rusty in the package while it's waiting to be fitted so you can see some spots of rust on this already another fault on these discs because they're cross drilled can be that you get cracks so you need to check your disc regularly to see if you get little cracks developing out of these holes um, some argue that the slotted ones are better because they don't produce the cracks so that's the new disc in place um, it will flop about uh, unless you put a wheel nut on so it's a good idea to get one of your wheel nuts just wind it all the way on so the discs in place and don't flap about while you're trying to get the caliper and the new uh, brake pads in place okay so these are the new pads I've cleaned up I mean look at the massive difference there the shim things I've put a bit of copper slip either side because I'm a belt and braces kind of geezer and this is the wear indicator spring so that needs to go towards you when you put the caliper back on so this one will fit that way so the spring is touching disc on the front where you can have a look at it to see how worn the disc is because it'll, it'll have to get to the bottom of that spring before it squeals obviously so now what we need to do is put these in the caliper um, get this back on and put the bolts in to hold the caliper in place calipers back on pads are in with the shims behind them uh, massive difference in the amount of pad we've got now uh, put the top pin in and then hook this metal bracket thing behind the top one don't put the bottom pin in yet you need to get this middle bolt thing through first so put that through next and then bend that back and push that pin through then we just need to tap these in so they're flush with the side of the caliper 13 mil bolt is in the end it needs tightening up and it's currently hung on just one of the 17 mil bolts just to hold it in place I'm going to get some uh, thread lock put the bottom one in take that top one back out again thread lock that and put that back in then we're done apart from doing the other side obviously well welcome to the other side of the car we now have to do the same thing all over again okay well we should be able to whiz through this shouldn't we really so step one wheel off step two take out the two pins undo the 13 mil nut which is there and take that pin out keep that clip take a photograph of this on your phone so you get it right when you put it back it's not difficult but it's easy to get it upside down or then wonder how the hell to get it all back together again okay at this point you'll find I've took the pins out all the clips are missing but this is still rock solid because we need to just compress the pistons a little bit it's a good idea when you're doing that to open the bonnet and just release the brake cylinder cap that just enables the fluid to go up a bit easier when you're trying to compress the pads back with whatever device you can muster as I said I've got these babies I like these because they got little rubber grips on so they don't damage the caliper you can get special tools to do this but they look just like this so I use this okay uh, pads are out so stage whatever we were up to take the two 17 mil bolts out round about make sure you get the right ones because at the bottom there's two you'll know because it'll be significantly longer than the other one you don't want to take the long one out have a look and take the two small, shorter ones out Caliper's now hanging up with your bungee. Next job, put the two bolts in the disc to get it off. Yeah, this one's rock solid as well. Screw that in, take the disc off. Clean the new disc with some brake cleaner and put it on with a wheel nut to hold it in place. Oops, my bad. Don't forget to clean this 
with your little wire brush, put some anti seeds or copper slip on it, maybe do the nuts as well, that's up to you, before you put the disc on, the new one. Next job, clean the little metal shim things that were on the back of your old pads. Use some brake cleaner, don't spray the brake cleaner near your new pads, you don't want to get brake cleaner on them. Okay, shims are clean, bit of copper slip on the back of the new pads, shim, bit of copper slip on the back of the shim. Don't forget that the one with the little metal wear thing on, spring clip thing, that goes to the front, i.e. to this side of the wheel, the bit you can look at to see where the wear is, okay? Next we put the new pads in. I've actually managed to push these back with my hands, believe it or not. If you've got the cap undone inside the engine bay, put this side in, remember, wear thing here. I've put the two pins in just temporarily because this pad has a tendency to drop into the middle of the wheel, which means it's in the wrong place. It just keeps it in the right place for later. This pin obviously needs to go in from the other side with the point of it ending up here. So now time to get the other one in, which is obviously a bit more difficult. Pin, bolt, pin, all in, springy clip in, again, refer to your picture if you can't remember how to do it, or draw yourself a diagram on a piece of paper. You need to tap these pins in, tighten that up, and then put in, tighten, and thread lock the two 17mm on the back that hold the caliper on, because we don't want the caliper to fall off now, do we? So finally, we're pretty much done now, pins are knocked in, Tightened up the 13mm, two 17s are in with thread lock on them so they don't come off. Uh, I've taken the wheel nut off, ready for the wheel to go on. I'm just going to have a general clean around here, take off my oily mitt prints. And so we're done. Front discs and pads done. And not that long and not that hard to do yourself. These parts are even available from places like Euro Car Parts, believe it or not. Or you can get them online from specialist sellers. Saves you quite a bit of money. I hope you've enjoyed the video, if you have, like, subscribe, tick the bell, dance a jig, all that good stuff. Thanks very much and I'll hope to see you in the next video.